Hey there, Virgo. Welcome to your reading for April 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general reading for the month. Yes, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, please go ahead and email me. You can find my email address in the description box below. Just go ahead and tell me a little bit about your situation and I'll help you get set up with a reading. Yes? A little bit of announcement time. First, if you are in the New York City area or will be in the New York City area and you would like to get an in-person reading with me, you have two options. I am available on Fridays at Om Shanti Bookshop. The link to their website, their, web, their website is in the description box below. Check them out, get their phone number, and you can give them a call and pre-book a session. I'm there all day on Friday. And then also... Um, on Saturdays, I am at Collective here also in NYC um, <clears throat> from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. If you would like to pre-book a 20-minute session with me there, all you have to do is email Chloe at, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Chloe at Collective nyc.com and she'll be able to set you up again her email address is in the description box below and a special event on the 28th of april which is a sunday i will be at awaken fair in tarrytown new york if you would like to book a either 30 or 15 minute session with me you can pre-book those using the link also in the description box below yes uh, booking for those ends on the 27th of april yeah Okay, guys, so getting into your reading for the month, um, again, please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Energies are fluid, so it could really be anything, you know, it could flow either way, yes? But for all my Virgos, let's see what's going on for April. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Virgos, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for April 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Virgo. So I'm keeping it like I normally do. Um, well, I'm keeping it like I did uh, last month. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to start by pulling an oracle card from the unicorn, or the oracle of unicorns, for an overall theme for your month, and then I will be going into using the golden universal tarot to get the energy reading for the month for you. Yeah. So let's see your theme for April 2019 for all my Virgos, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. I'm going to give this one more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got here for you guys. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. Best message, please. Oh, okay. There you go. You've got growth, Virgo. Wow, that's beautiful. Growth. Seek out a mentor or a guide. Take baby steps as you grow. Be willing to learn from others. So two things here. For, well, actually, uh, two and a half. There's two points. One has an A and a B, but they're kind of interrelated, okay? The first is that, and this is the first thing that I picked up on when I saw this card. You've gone through a lot of growth, recently and the month of april is going to be a time for maybe putting the wisdom that you've acquired into practice um, or maybe even sharing your wisdom with others the other side to this i'm getting is obviously that april will be a really uh, a month uh, a month of really strong potential growth for you and so you're needing to follow the advice here in seeking out a mentor or a guide. Take baby steps as you grow and be willing to learn from others. Okay. The other, like the part B of that is, um, you know, you could be facing some serious financial success this month in which you're needing to take it a little bit slow with. I know someone that that resonates with already, but <laughs> um, yeah, just... So that's the the um, idea of taking baby steps as you grow is really standing out here with that situation. Also seeking out a mentor or a guide. This could be someone that um, it can help you on this path or um, that can like help you in the sense of be a mentor or a guide 
or be a companion or a partner as you grow to help maybe delegate, delegate <laughs> some, uh, some responsibilities. Okay. Be willing to learn from others, but also be willing to gain some assistance from others. Yeah. All right, Virgo. So let's get into the energies of the month here for you. Virgo. I'm going to give this three shuffles. One, two more, and then we'll see what we've got here for you. All right. One more. And please excuse me. I'm going to be scratching my nose over and over because sometimes when I channel, my nose gets itchy and I already start feeling it acting up. So there it goes. See? There you go. So there, so you know. Okay. Let's see what we've got for you, Virgo. Boop. Oop. Okay. Overall energy. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Okay. The deck is upside down. Overall energy. You do have the five of cups. Now, for some of you specifically, it's the energies of the five of cups, regret, regret remorse, loss, pain, hurt, um, closing of cycles, closing of cycles uh, specifically meaning things changing, maybe changing drastically around you. That's what this growth could mean. Um, ultimately, the growth is coming from this five of cups energy, whatever hurt, sorrow, painful energies or painful situations you've experienced. There you go. The Knight of Pentacles. Now, I do see this as your energy, either the Knight or the Page. I very much see as the mutable energies. In this case, the mutable sign for the Earth signs is Virgo. Um, the Knight of Pentacles is absolutely talking about taking it slow as you grow, okay? And in your growth card here, or in your Oracle card here, which is growth, it says take baby steps as you grow. Nobody knows taking baby steps like that damn Knight of Pentacles, right? And I mean that in the most endearing way possible because that's really what's going to help you really heal and grow from whatever situations you're dealing with. You have the Two of Wands underneath that, ooh, and the Two of Cups underneath that as well. We could be talking about some sort of soulmate relationship coming into play. We also could be talking about union uh, balance within, but we also, this doesn't have to be a romantic partnership. This could also be a business or creative partnership or like a creative partnership in some sort of business. Okay. So you might want to look into getting some team members on, on your side, um, working on you know, delegating some of your responsibilities, okay? Wow, I really do know somebody that this definitely resonates with. Um, <laughs> uh, there also could be some sort of soulmate relationship coming in after, uh, during a period of healing from sort of heartbreak. And that could be the two of wands energy that you're trying to understand or trying to figure out whether to move in the direction of uh, moving forward with this relationship or moving in a different direction, staying single potentially and healing yourself more. To be quite honest, if I, if you feel like you need more healing, I would say go with that. Okay. But don't automatically just reject the relationship though. Like if it feels good for you, then go with it, okay? I mean, that can get tricky, but hey, it's a general reading. Take what resonates with you, okay? Um, but you're at somewhat of a crossroads here, uh, Virgo, and I really do feel like that crossroads has a lot to do with your growth as of, as of late, okay? The growth that you have um, experienced in the past is either leading you, to, has either led you to this crossroads that you may currently find yourself in or is leading you towards some sort of crossroads here, okay? All right, well, let's see what we've got here for you. Now, I have been saying in the past, I've said that these are... Um, these readings are, you know, split in the first half of your month, second half of your month. It doesn't have to be that way, okay? If that resonates with you, then take it as it resonates. But this also could just be the first half and the second half of your reading. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't have to be... It's all fluid. It's all intermixed, inter intertwined anyway. So take it as it resonates, yes? First set of surrounding energies for you, Virgo, in the first half of your reading. Whoa. The Lovers. 
We really could be talking about a soulmate relationship coming in. Some sort of divine union, divine partnership. This also can mean creativity, creatively, business-wise, business partnership, creative partnership, something like that. It also can talk about divine union within. Growth could really be leading you towards that. Whatever you dealt with in the past absolutely could be leading you towards that sort of divine union within, with the lovers. You could be dealing with a Gemini here. Entirely possible. Um, you could have Gemini in your chart. Now, this also speaks to a choice, potentially. Crossroads here, okay? You are maybe having to choose um, either with the growth that you've been through so far... Or with, I just found a piece of fabric softener in my shirt <laughs> that's been in my shirt all day. Guys, I've been wearing this shirt all day. <laughs> and I literally was just like, what is that in my arm? That can't be. Sorry, guys. I digress. <laughs> the growth that you have been experiencing or the growth that, the growth that you are going to experience over the coming month is leading you to some sort of choice of which path to take. And it's go and actually this is interesting because this is kind of how I see how I was seeing it before when I was talking about the choice in the two of wands or the crossroads. You can either continue on this path that this growth has been leading you up to or you can go on a different path that is kind of taking you back a little bit or taking you away from this growth that you've been building up towards, okay? Mm. The Lovers is coupled with... Ooh, the Knight of Swords. More Gemini energy here. Um... Because the Gemini, Gemini is the mutable sign of the air signs. And so, like I said, I see the mutable signs of the uh, the suits as the pages or the knights. Okay? So you really could be dealing with a Gemini here. But also, there's some sort of communication that might be coming in. If we are talking about a soulmate situation, someone might come in pretty quickly um, or might have a lot to say. But also, there could be a lot of truth and honesty when it comes to making some sort of choice. It could be a really rash decision. It may be a really quick decision that you make. A really blunt and honest end to something. I'm hearing cutting away fears, shames, and guilt. Now, the lovers... It, in my opinion, represents the choice between vice or virtue. So that's kind of what I was talking about with this crossroads that you are coming to. Vice would be moving forward with the growth that you've been building up towards and you've been experiencing. I'm sorry, virtue. That's virtue. Vice being the side of going backwards, basically. Um, and for some of you, I see you fiercely cutting out that vice choice. Fiercely. But there's a lot of quick decisions, a lot of communication, and a lot of very decisive actions with this Knight of Swords energy here, okay? Second set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading. The star. Healing, wish fulfillment, but also maybe an Aquarian now. Um, dreams coming true. And I'm hearing it's almost good to be too good to be true, but it's happening. So something may really come in. I mean, there's a lot of healing that's happening here. And this is all ex all um, surrounding this growth and the five of cups that you're potentially, I really feel like you're moving out of some sort of remorseful energy. And you're finally healing through it. And you're really growing from it. I mean, it's, this is really beautiful. This star energy is absolutely speaking to this growth that you're going through. Because the star does talk about divine healing. Healing on a much... Um, uh, healing on an emotional level, sure. But on a much deeper spiritual level. So this could be like the closing out of some major cycles for you. Okay? The star is coupled with... 
<laughs> the Eight of Pentacles, okay? A lot of work is going to be done, needs to be done, potentially, or has been done to bring about this wish fulfillment, this star fulfillment, um, or, or the, the healing, the wish fulfillment of the star. I am seeing that um, there is potentially going to be a lot of work that you'll need to do here for some of you, especially if... Um, you could be coming into the month of April with this healing have already been started. And so you could be continuing to work towards that healing. I do see some of you recognizing the direction that you're going in. Maybe you have, in fact, chosen, taken that decisive action, and you chose to continue healing and to continue growing. And so that's what this star and the Eight of Pentacles is talking about, okay? But the Eight of Pentacles talks about a lot of hard work. So maybe you are coming into a career aspect or a time in your career where you're doing a lot of hard work, but it's it's a dream come true, okay? I see you. <laughs> the challenge in the first half of the reading here for you, you have, ah, but there's that Nine of Swords. There's the Virgo all up in their head about this. Maybe you feel like you can't handle it. Maybe it's just too much. Maybe it's overwhelming. Maybe this growth is just too much of a change for you, Earth sign. Mm, even though you are mutable and you're flowy, you're still an Earth sign. So change is not the best or is not the easiest for the Earth signs to handle sometimes, okay? Get out of your head, Virgo. That's all I'm going to say about it. Get out of your head. Because look at, I mean, these are beautiful energies. Regardless, get out of your head. All right? Stay out of your head. Nine of Swords is coupled with, ah, the Ace of Wands. But you have the inspiration. So there's some sort of anxiety here, maybe of feeling like you're inadequate, that you can't handle it, that it's too much, whatever. And yet, you still have the inspiration and the drive. What I want to tell you is, Regardless of whatever your ego might be trying to tell you to, to, to protect you, in essence, from getting hurt, or um, whatever your fears might be telling you, if you have the inspiration and the drive, you can do it. Don't worry about it. And that's, yeah, there's that perfectionistic Virgo energy also coming through. Make mistakes, Virgo. That's how you learn, okay? <laughs> you can't be perfect. All I mean, no one is perfect, Virgo. <laughs> I love you guys. I mean, I'm a fellow Virgo. I have Virgo rising, so I get it. But perfectionism is an illusion. Say that with me. Perfectionism is an illusion. There we go. Okay. Your closing message in the first half of your reading or the potential outcome you've got. Six of Pentacles. Um, this to me is saying that business is going to be doing well. Um, I think there's going to be a real balance here between give and take things. I just feel like things are very, very balanced with this six of pentacles and, uh, money's flowing well, coming in, going out. If this is a big business venture that's going for you, I, uh, that we're talking about here, I really feel like things are going to be going very well, very balanced, very even despite your fears, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Six of Pentacles is coupled with, ooh, the moon. The Six of Pentacles with the moon. Things are much better than you think, Virgo. Much better than you think. Again, don't let your doubt, your fear, your anxiety, your worry get in the way. Don't let any of that dim your shine. And if you really can't see it with your physical eyes, you need to turn to your intuition and listen to your inner voice. Because things with the Six of Pentacles and the moon here, things are much better than you think. Ah, and you know what? The moon is teaching you some a lesson in trusting the universe, trusting yourself, trusting your manifestation abilities. So even though things may not look the way you want them to, aha, I got you, Virgo. Even though things may look may not look the way you want them to, they're actually much better than you think. It's much more balanced than you think. You have to trust yourself, and you have to trust your intuition. Okay. 
You have to trust the universe, too. The abundance of the universe, they're saying. Okay. Ooh. Getting into the second half of your reading here, Virgo. But see, also, I'm, I'm sorry. Before I go any further, that's part of the growth element here. Trusting in the balance. Trusting in the universe, okay? Okay. First set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading here. You've got... The Ten of Wands, but you see, you might be carrying too much, okay? This also might be letting go of certain certain um, uh, uh, burdens that you no longer need to carry. And that really could be what this growth is helping to uh, manifest for you, is helping you to um, achieve especially if you've been looking to if you've been wanting to like reduce some of the weight off of your shoulders um, but also recognizing that you need to release some certain some aspects and being willing to do so either recognizing it and or being really to being willing to do so could also be part of this growth for you here okay ten of wands <coughs> is coupled with the eight of swords you've felt trapped. And this is another Virgo energy here with the Eight of Swords. Mental entrapment. Um, keeping yourself in some sort of mental cage. But that's where the burdens come in. And so a lot of these burdens that you could be working on releasing or you could have grown into a place of now you're ready to release them could have been mental in nature. Uh, it could be... Um, uh, lack mentality. It could be belief systems, uh, beliefs about yourself, beliefs about others, beliefs about the universe and way every the way the world works and all that stuff. Uh, specifically, it could be beliefs in how you need to show up in the world, which is unfair, unjust, and probably inauthentic. All right. This growth either either you've come to the point where you can. See things for what they are and release them, or you're growing to that point where now you're really going to be able to let some burdens go and get yourself out of that mental entrapment, okay? Second set of surrounding energies for you in the second half of your reading, you've got the Nine of Cups, Virgo. Yes! Satisfaction, happiness, right underneath the star. These are both cards of wish fulfillment. I mean... Yes, Virgo. I'm see I'm absolutely seeing you being feeling very very satisfied once you finally release some of these burdens and get yourself out of this mental entrapment. That's absolutely what this growth is l lending to you is leading you towards, okay? 9 of cups is coupled with justice. Oh my god, Virgo. This is excellent. This is so excellent. Balancing of the scales. Karma being repaid. Ooh. Whoa. Karmic debts being repaid here. And finally having the weight off of your shoulders because of it. Or at least being able to release yourself from it. That absolutely, and my attention was just drawn to the two of wands here, that absolutely could be that crossroads that you've come to. Now you've released all this karma potentially, or you've gotten, you've released some sort of burden, and now you can go anywhere. Good on you, Virgo. Your challenge in the second half of your reading, you've got... Ooh, the Empress. Believe that you are abundant. Believe that you can do anything. I am really feeling like there's a, a little bit of a too-good-to-be-true energy. And the challenge of the, of the Empress is believing in abundance. Believing that you are limitless, that you can do anything. That if at any moment you don't like the like the way your life is playing out, you can rewrite that script at any moment. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to, you know, the circumstances are going to manifest instantly like that. We are still in a dense three-dimensional world or reality. So, you know, you're going to have to let some things play out or you're going to have to give it some time to manifest. But anything is possible. The Empress is coupled with. The world. This is such a beautiful reading, Virgo. Literally, the world is at your is is at your fingertips. The world is your oyster. 
You can literally create anything. The challenge is to recognize that, to believe in that, and to allow yourself to do so. And how do you allow yourself to do so? You release these burdens and you release yourself from this mental entrapment. Yes, Virgo. Your closing message or potential outcome here in the second half of your reading. Ooh. The King of Cups could be dealing with a Scorpio or another water sign, Cancer or Pisces. This could be that individual that might want to come in and, and share some love with you. Maybe that soulmate. Uh, that soulmate. Um, but also, this is taking emotional responsibility, Virgo. Recognizing that just like you can create anything it is you want in your life, everything that you've experienced in your life up until now, you have had a hand in creating. Nothing has been done to you. Everything is done for you by your own hand, basically. You create your own reality, Virgo. And so you need, everybody does, not just you, Virgo, everybody does. So you need to come to some, uh, to an emotional um, balance, um, uh, recognizing that within yourself, okay? And from there, once you get a grasp on that, I mean, you're Gucci. You can just like take off and do whatever it is you want once you recognize this and take responsibility, right? King of Cups is coupled with the page of pentacles. So what this is saying, it's saying two different things. One, taking responsibility for your life and creating something new, starting over from a fresh perspective, uh, uh, reaching a new level, i.e. growth, the, uh, the, the, the theme of your month. But also, this really could be someone coming in to offer you something. Uh, and... With this page of pentacles here, this could be a commitment. Offer you something solid. It could be a job. And this could really could be a creative venture, especially with the King of Cups here. Someone who is very well versed or very well set up to employ you in some sort of creative, uh, creative venture or someone who is very qualified to be a creative partner. But also this could be a love situation. And your growth up until now, or maybe even through the month of April, um, will lead, could lead you to this. Okay, Virgo? So there you have it. I hope that was helpful for you. That was a really great reading. Um, again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, go ahead and email me. My email is in the description box below, as well as the other links to book some personal in-person readings. Um, yeah. But I hope you guys have a great month. And I love you guys so much. And I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of May. Yeah? Take care. Bye.